Again, make sure the phones are muted and or off. And when you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone there as quickly as possible. Name and your affiliation. Up next, from Kansas State, Coach Chris Kleiman. Coach, want to make an opening statement? Then we'll take questions. Yeah, it's it's great to be back here at AT&T Stadium. Uh, last year was a different experience for us because we came down here. Uh, and checked out the facilities. We were playing here on September 2nd of that year, and uh, it's fun to be back here. I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank uh, Commissioner Bowlesby for his service uh, in the Big 12 for so long and, and his friendship with uh, myself and my family. Uh, Bob and Bowlesby and my, and my family go back a long ways, and Bob was the athletic director at Northern Iowa when I was a player there, so I appreciate everything that uh, uh, Bob has done for my family as well as for the Big 12. I'm excited in welcoming uh, Commissioner Yormark into uh, into the Big 12 and uh, looking forward to many more years to, uh, of great football uh, to come. And as far as Kansas State, uh, we're excited. We have uh, uh, very optimistic, uh, high expectations as everybody does this time of year. Uh, but uh, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, have a number of guys back on both sides of the ball, but. Uh, as the landscape of college football is right now, it's going to be uh, the, the new players that uh, you've got to mesh with those uh, uh, returning players uh, that are going to be the key to your success. And, and we have a number of positions where we're going to have a, a lot of new faces out there. And uh, some were here in the spring. Many of them were not here in the spring. And so for us to get together with those guys in August and have a great fall camp, uh, and put the work in uh, so that uh, come September we can start off the, the fall with a good season. So um, we'll open up for questions. Have questions, raise your hands. We'll get the microphone to you. We've got right, up, right in front of us, Coach, about the fourth row back. Sean J. Raja from CBS Sports. Coach, uh, what really drew you to Adrian when he entered the transfer portal, and what have you kind of seen from him uh, that's allowed you to already bring him to Big 12 Media Days as a leader? Well, the first thing that drew us to him, obviously, was the amount of games that he has played uh, at Nebraska. But um, uh, if you get around Adrian or you visit with Adrian, the first thing that jumps out at, to, jumps out at me is his maturity and what a grounded individual he is. I've been so impressed with him as a person, uh, as, a, as a man of faith, as, as somebody that um, uh, came in and missed all the spring because of a, an injury he had. He practiced the last two practices, but just watching him uh, bond with the players, uh, watching him build relationships during a time when he couldn't be out front leading uh, after a workout or after a practice, and uh, now to see him going through the summer where he is uh, cleared and healthy and watching him you know, just kind of command the room. He's a tremendously mature individual that brings out the best in everybody, and that's what uh, excites me about him, but uh, what what drew us to him was obviously his games played and his maturity. Coach, we're going to go to the right hand side. First of two questions from there. Hey, Chris, uh, Tim Everson, Manhattan Mercury. Um, Felix Zama has had kind of a whirlwind last 12 months. He came in to last season as kind of unheralded, as now going into this season as the preseason Big 12 Defense Player of the Year. What, what have you seen out of his growth, and what, what makes him so special? Thank you. Uh, Felix, a couple things. One, he's as good a practice player as he is a game player in the fact of he goes and goes hard, and uh, he watched Wyatt Hubert do the same thing. And so he learned from Wyatt, especially during that uh, COVID year, of, of how to train and how to work your body and how to, how to play so, so dang hard play after play. And he's got a lot of confidence now. And I'm excited because I think Felix uh, had a breakout season last year. And I think if you'd ask him, I think he can be better. And he thinks he can be better as well, uh, especially when you put the surrounding pieces around him because we have most of our defensive line back uh, that it's hard to just double somebody. Uh, but uh, Felix is uh, so smart uh, and understands the game. Uh, I give a lot of credit to Coach Wyatt and Coach Tui uh, for putting him in positions. Uh, and, and then uh, Felix in making sure that he's watching enough film and, and seeing tendencies. But uh, I'm excited. Felix is a terrific football player and one of our better leaders as well. Coach, we're going to still go about, just about the same place right over there. 
uh, ColeThompsonFanNation.com. Colin becomes the offensive coordinator once again, and you remember what his success was in Manhattan as a quarterback. And when you look at him and Adrian and how they both are utilizing their legs, how important is it for them to work together? And more specifically, how have you seen them develop throughout the summer going into the year? Thank you. You bet. Um, well, for starters, I'm so excited for, for Colin Klein. He's earned the opportunity during our, our uh, three weeks uh, leading up to the bowl game and then playing as well as we did in the bowl game and just watching him lead and command the room and have the respect of the players. And then as far as he and Adrian, uh, I get to sit in on a lot of the quarterback meetings and uh, just seeing the dialogue between all the quarterbacks uh, and Coach Klein, but in particular Will and, and Adrian always um, having great dialogue with, with CK and uh, just continuing to put Colin's own spin on, on the offense. We're going to make some adjustments. We probably uh, are going to keep some things the same as some of our terminology that we'd had when Mess was here. Uh, but uh, we're still going to find a way to get 22 of the football. Everybody wants to make sure that Deuce gets his touches. And um, But I'm excited to see um, Colin and Adrian because they are very similar uh, type uh, type of players, type of people. and. Um, they both are very driven, and so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how those two mesh, mesh together. I'm excited because I know they will mesh really well. Again, if you have a question, just raise your hand. We've got one on the left side, Coach, about halfway back. Hey, Coach, Jackson Schneider, KSAL. Um, you talk about Deuce, and he's going to get his touches, obviously, and rightfully so, but I'm curious if you could go into detail about his development as a leader and what he's done to develop the rest of the running back room and, and how you've seen that kind of progress. Yeah, as a, as a junior now, um, he's had to take on some leadership role. Uh, it's easy to ask a sophomore to do that, but when we had kids like Noah Johnson and Skylar Thompson, he really didn't need to. Well, he's an older guy now, and uh, I've been really proud of the way that he has uh, kind of commanded the running back room and, and um, done some things with those new running backs, whether it's a freshman that we have or a transfer that we have. Uh, coming in that uh, he's taken them into the film room and, and showed them uh, kind of how to watch film and things to look for as well as taking them out on the field and doing some of their own drills um, and uh, and just kind of explaining to them kind of his craft and, and it's the work ethic that uh, uh, you, you see with Deuce Vaughn that you know I think that fee everybody feeds off of his work ethic whether it's on the field it's in the classroom it's in the film room it's in the weight room um, that kid works so hard and to see uh, your younger players watch arguably your best football player put the work in on a daily basis in all these areas as well as doing community service to say you can do all these things and be successful and so um, uh, Deuce is becoming a tremendous leader for our football team. Coach, we're going to go all the way as far back as you can see back there. Hey, Coach. Lana Reinhardt, uh, KSNT 27 Sports. How, how do you think of leading the conference in preseason all Big 12 picks? I'm sorry, the question again? What, what, what do you make of your team leading the conference oh. in all Big 12 picks? A couple things. One, uh, guys did some really good things last year uh, that uh, garnered that recognition. Uh, I look at it and, and applaud our staff, uh, coaches, support staff, recruiting staff for, for continuing to um, set the standard in recruiting and continue to uh, recruit quality student athletes here and, and developing them and then uh, take that development stage, whether it's uh, Scott Troush in nutrition to True Carroll in, in strength and conditioning to Minnie Hoffman in athletic training uh, of uh, so many people are going to have an impact on your on your career and taking all those people seriously and, and learning from all those people so that you can become the best version of yourself and to have six guys uh, that uh, are receiving accolades is pretty neat and I uh, I think of the, the handful that I would have said, boy, that one would have deserved it as well. So I'm excited because I think every team probably has those unheralded four or five guys that you think, well, that, that kid's going to really surprise some people because of how talented they are. But uh, um, I, I was excited for those, for those six guys. I, I didn't pay attention to who was first, who was second, as far as leading the conference, just the fact that those guys got the recognition they deserved. Coach, right in the front here, second row. Arnie Green from the Salina Journal and Topeka Capital Journal. Um, 
was curious about, now that you're in the second year with the new defense, uh, have it changed maybe the way you're recruiting uh, to those positions and what, what might have changed and what are you looking for now that maybe yep. you weren't before? Yeah, good question, Arnie. Um, it's interesting. I had a conversation with somebody else earlier today. Last year when we went into fall camp, we were still unsure if we were going to wholesale three down or still play four down, and so we practiced both of them um, because we'd recruited mostly to four down. And so we had them both working all through fall camp. And then uh, it was kind of our players that said they felt more comfortable with the three down. And that's how we started this game, uh, the game against Stanford in here and played really fast. And the kids just fell in love with it from the recruiting standpoint. Uh, we're still looking for long athletes that can play in space or put their hand down from a linebacker defensive end standpoint. And then we're looking for that big defensive lineman like, a, uh, like an Eli Huggins, like a Jalen Pickle that can hold point at the nose and still, still trying to uh, recruit guys that can run and hit in the secondary. Uh, but uh, this will be our first full season with uh, uh, not wavering to think, are we going to go to a four down, but we're staying with a three down. And so it gave us the opportunity off season uh, to do some professional development with our staff to go to different places that are running some three down that we were pretty vanilla, we thought, last year with our three down. And we need to probably uh, be a little bit more aggressive and, and add a few more wrinkles. Coach, we're going to go left side about halfway back. Hey, Chris, Callis Robinette here from the Wichita Eagle, Kansas City Star. Um, after your stint at North Dakota State, where winning national championships was the bar every year, I'm just wondering how you look back and rate a pair of eight win seasons so far in your tenure and what you think about building on it. Okay. Thanks, Callis. Um, yeah, that was the bar that was set, and that was there was no other, there was no variant to that bar. You were winning a national championship, or you weren't going to be there very long. Um, you know, I, when I came in here in 2019, I, I really wanted to make sure we got back to a bowl game. I thought that was really important to get back to, to bowl eligibility and um, have the opportunity to, to be successful and win every game and be in every game to win every game and never set a set a sight on. We need to win this amount of games. I, I, I've never believed in that as far as, far as saying, well, we have to win seven, eight, nine, whatever the amount of games are, uh, nor have I ever put the importance of, boy, this game's the most important one uh, because then what are you going to tell the kids on the next week? This one's not as important. And so trying to just put an emphasis on a week-to-week -week basis uh, of playing our best football, uh, the thing that uh, – that we need to be better at so that we can continue to push towards a Big 12 championship, which is the ultimate goal, is to be more consistent week in and week out. And uh, take the 2020 season out of it when nobody knew who was going to be in the lineup week to week in 2019 and more specifically 2021 where we knew our roster better is just weren't, haven't been consistent enough um, in all three phases, offense, defense, and teams. And that's what we're trying to do is be more consistent. Part of that is recruiting and development and having more players uh, so that when you do get nicked up, uh, you don't fall off and you don't um, uh, put a player out there that maybe isn't ready to be out there. All that being said, this is still where we're at with the landscape of college football that you're going to have to play some kids that are really new to your program. It's just your job to get them up to speed as quickly as you can. So I, I think we're on the right trajectory, Kellis, um, but I know there's more in us. Coach, we're going to go way, way, way in the back. Hey, Coach, Landon Reinhardt, 27 Sports again. How exciting has it been to keep those in-state recruits? Yeah, we really can't talk about recruiting uh, per se uh, right now with, with the NSA rules, but it's just important for us to do well in the state of Kansas. I've said that since I was here in 2019. It's important for us to do well in the state. Coach, we've got uh, one about halfway back, and then I'll get you a microphone. Wyatt Thompson, K-State Radio. Good to see you, sir. You had so much success last year with those plug-and-play guys in the secondary with Stubblefield, Yeast, those types of guys. How are you feeling going into camp about the specifically the, the safety positions? Yeah, thanks, Wyatt. It's great to see you. Um, 
Probably our biggest question mark, to be honest with you, as we head into fall camp. We had a couple of guys that were here in the spring in, in Kobe Savage, and then we had TJ Smith back and Sincere Mason who was coming off an injury. But we've really plugged and added three or four guys this summer that we haven't had the chance to spend a lot of time with. Um, but uh, I'm excited to get into to fall camp so that myself, Van Malone, Joe Klanderman, you know, we've got three secondary coaches that are going to have to coach these guys nonstop. We were so fortunate to hit home runs with Reggie Stubblefield, uh, Rush Yeast, Julius Brents, uh, that had an immediate impact. Sincere had an immediate impact till he was hurt. But that's going to be what we have to expect out of these guys is to have an immediate impact. And so we're going to have to all coach the heck out of these guys because um, the standard's high. Uh, they know the standard's high. That's why they came to K-State. But they also know there's an opportunity to, complete, to play early. And so we're excited uh, about the challenge we have in the secondary. Coach, we're going to go down left side, about four rows back. Thank you. Danny Davis, Austin American Statesman. Chris, what makes Deuce so special? Um, what he is off the field, in my mind, uh, that's, he's a great talent. Everybody knows he's a great talent. Uh, I tell the story, we had a youth camp in uh, late April, early May before before the guys left for May break, and uh, we had a session that ended at 11.30, and the autographs for 11.30 to 12, and then uh, there was a break for the players, and, and as you can imagine, Deuce's line was really, really long, and he stayed out there for an extra hour, uh, signing autographs for every kid that was there, and taking pictures, and, and he, knows, he knows the gig, um, but that's a, a credit to him, a credit to his parents, um, because of the way they raised him. Uh, he's appreciative of what Kansas State has, has provided him. And uh, we're, we appreciate him sticking with K-State because uh, it's a great fit. And uh, the kid is as good a practice player as he is a game player. He's as good in the film room as he is on the practice field. He's as good in the weight room as he is taking care of his body, rehab, recovery, nutrition. And you need those guys in your program for all the young players to see that it just doesn't happen. Yeah, the kid's talented, but it just doesn't happen. It's doing all the little things on the field, off the field, in the classroom, in the community, in the weight room, in the rehab center, so that you have your body at the very best. And then doing it with an absolute smile on your face, no matter what. And that's fun for me to see every day. Anybody else? All right, coach, we appreciate your time. Good luck this season. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.